Hello, everybody, and welcome to Countdown to the Cup. I'm Joaquin Jaime alongside Caleb Keller from our TVG studios in Los Angeles. And we're just about a month away to the 31st running of the Breeders' Cup World Championships at Santa Anita on October 31st and November 1st. And this is a new segment that we're going to be doing here on TVG. Kayla and I will be with you for about the next month or so, taking a look at some of the latest news, insights, and some inside information, everything that you need to hopefully keep you as informed as possible leading in to Breeders' Cup weekend. Well, Caleb, we'll go ahead and start first with a look at the venue history because this is going to be the third straight year that Santa Anita will be hosting the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, third straight year here at Santa Anita and also going to be some new sites coming up. Keeneland coming up in 2015 and also 2017 mm -hmm. at Del Mar where they're going to have new dirt surfaces there. So a lot of excitement uh, leading forward with some of the really historic racetracks going to have the uh, Breeders' Cup for the first time. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and see how the lineup of races is going to go ahead and be on October 31st, Friday, and then Breeders' Cup Championship Saturday on November 1st. Four Breeders' Cup races on that Friday and then nine on Saturday, minus one race. The marathon has been discontinued this year. I'm not going to shed a tear on the marathon uh, being gone, you. but uh, I'll tell you, obviously the distaff is going to be the, uh, the marquee race on Friday and then the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic, as always, going to be the centerpiece there on Saturday. And then as far as important dates, the race order will be officially announced on Wednesday, October 22nd, and then the post position draw for all 13 races will go ahead and take place on Monday, October 27th. Well, Caleb, a lot of big storylines coming into the 31st Breeders' Cup this year. And I think one of the bigger ones is that we have possibly seven Breeders' Cup winners from 2013 maybe showing up again in 2014. You know, one of the things with horse racing is sometimes it's tough to keep your star equine athletes around. And it's nice to see so many defending champions coming back. And then also the question about who's going to win horse of the year? Because halfway through the season, I think everybody was ready to just give it to California Chrome. But as we've seen over the years, really the latter half of the racing season is what decides the horse of the year campaign. And I think that uh, really going into the Breeders' Cup Classic and some other races like the Breeders' Cup Mile with Wise Dan, I think horse of the year is uh, certainly up for grabs. And we have three horses looking to win three Breeders' Cup races. Beholder won the Juvenile Phillies in 2012, won the Breeders' Cup Distaff last year. You have Secret Circle, who won the Juvenile Sprint, which has been discontinued as well. He did that in 2011 at Churchill Downs. And then obviously you just talked about Wise Dan, who's looking for his third straight Breeders' Cup Mile. Now, the other storyline is you mentioned about Horse of the Year. I think regardless of what Wise Dan does in the mile this year, Horse of the Year is going to come down to the Breeders' Cup Classic, mm -hmm. as it should be. But we have a lot of three-year-olds that are going to be making a late run for, for the Eclipse Award. This year's Breeders' Cup Classic really reminds me quite a bit of the 2007 edition of the Breeders' Cup Classic when basically it was the who's who mm -hmm. of the three-year-olds at the time. You had Curlin, you had Hardspun, you had Street Sense. I think that uh, this year's running looks a lot similar to 2000, 2007. And with Wise Dan being the two-time defending champ, California Chrome being the early favorite, Sheer Belief being the undefeated horse, but also Tonalus is starting to really build a resume. He's kind of been the spoiler so far this year. But the Belmont win, the Jockey Club Gold Cup win, and potentially a big run in the Classic, you can't really throw his name out either. Yeah, California Chrome. If he had grade ones in the Santa, Santa Anita Derby, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Breeders' Cup Classic, I think he's still champion three-year-old in Horse of the Year. And then he mentions Shared Belief. He's a perfect seven for seven so far. And then if he can win the Breeders' Cup Classics, that's three victories versus older horses. Now, the last storyline we'll go ahead and take a look at is the track surface mm. at, at Santa Anita. We mentioned at the top that this is the third straight year that Santa Anita is hosting the Breeders' Cup. And at least the past couple of years, Caleb, it's been really speed favoring to say the least. Yeah, some of the handicappers, myself included, have been griping a little bit about how fast the racetrack is, the, the fact that the front runners really have an advantage. But I did have a chance to talk to the new track superintendent at Santa Anita, Dennis Moore, and they have replaced the, uh, the dirt surface, which we've mm -hmm. talked about here for the opening weekend. And one of the things that he told me is, I'm going to quote it here, the single source material is what he was uh, talking about, the dirt, coming in actually from an excavation uh, project there at Los Angeles uh, International Airport. And one of the things that Dennis was telling me is, obviously, number one, safety comes first for the horses. But I really asked him point blank, I said, do you think that this new dirt surface is going to be a little bit more fair? And he said that that's pretty much what they're hoping for. And really, the two races I look at last year that show you just how speed favoring the racetrack was, the Juvenile Phillies, when mm -hmm. she's a tiger goes 45 and one for the half mile. I know she got disqualified, but she took them all the way around. And then Golden Sense, 44 and three for the opening half. And you, you're not supposed to be able to win a two turn race like that. So the moral of the story is with this new dirt surface, I think that it's gonna play a little bit more to the horses from off the pace on the dirt there in the Breeders' Cup. 
All right, just an early look at some of the storylines leading into the Breeders' Cup. That's going to wrap up our first countdown to the Cup segment. And a reminder that when you sign up for a new TVG account, wager $200, you get $150 right back in that new TVG account. All the details at TVG.com.